Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, you're smiling, you're making me smile. I, <laughs> I can't even do my intro. Joining us today, Olympic silver medalist in the 4x200 freestyle relay. We are joined by 16 year old Bella Sims. Hi. <laughs> How's it going, Bella? Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. I am doing well today. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned to you, uh, 2020 Olympian in Tokyo. Um, so we're going to start there. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about your whole swimming history, but I want to start with Olympic trials. Um, heading into trials, you had like so many cuts for different <laughs> events. Um, how did you narrow it down to what events you were going to focus on and swim? Well, I don't even, okay. Coach Ron has like a whole process through everything he has, but going into it, um, I swam like the 200 at like pro series and like whatever meets to like, get me ready to like learn how to race like the race. And, um, he was like, I think your 200 could be really good. And he, he knows that if he enters me in an event, I'm going to have to swim it. Like I, I like my, I put my mind to it and like, I'm gonna like, Oh, I'm going to swim that. So like, he doesn't enter me in the events that he thinks will like ruin that race. So like, I, um, I thought I had a good chance in the 400 also, but he was like, no, I'm not going to put you in that because it's the day before the 200. And I think you had a really good chance in the 200. And then he was like the 800, you probably have, could have a chance to, and like, that's like the last day or whatever. So we can put you in it. And then the two fly, I wanted to swim it, but since I made finals for the two free, I couldn't because it would counteract with the finals. So I had to scratch that. And my hundred fly was just a, a nerve releaser, I guess, <laughs> to get me ready for the meet. Was, was the hundred fly your first event or was the tuner free? Yeah, the hundred okay. fly. Okay. So that was just kind of getting into the meet. Yeah. Um, so like you said, you, you thought you had really good chances in multiple events to make the team. So you went in kind of thinking like, this is a, this is a reality for me. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, I mean, did, when you say kind of, you know, did you, I, obviously you hoped you made the team. Did you think you could do it? Well, I was just in the beginning of like about to go like into the meet, like, maybe like a few weeks before the actual like event um I was like kind of trying to just be positive about it and like being like um or like when my parents would be like oh like what do you like talk to, talking to my family they'd be like oh what are you guys doing for like fourth of July or whatever and I'd be like <laughs> oh I'm gonna be in Tokyo or whatever just to, like be positive about it and be like oh I'm gonna make the team like not like trying to throw any like negative things around and then like during the <laughs> during the race and like my parents were also like on board with that. They're, they'd be like, oh no, you're going to be there. Like, like always so positive. And then when the race came, my brothers like actually thought that like my parents thought like hundred percent that I was going to make the team. And like, once it happened, like my parents were crying and whatever. And they're like, oh, I didn't think it was going to happen. And my, my brothers were so confused. They were like, you literally were talking about how she was going to make the team. And we were like, it was just to be positive. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it was it was a weird <laughs> overall pre <laughs> me experience yeah yeah I mean so even leading up to trials I mean you were with obviously you had two teammates who also made the team and Erica Sullivan and Katie Grimes you were with you were training with them the whole time do you feel like they had a similar mindset heading into the games of like oh we're just trying to stay positive we're like we're gonna make the team like did they talk like you did well I think yeah pretty much um during practice we I don't even remember everything is like a <laughs> of like a whatever but um yeah we were talking pretty positive about it it wasn't like anything negative really I don't really like to think negative things so like anytime anything negative would pop out I'd be like shut up like stop <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, everything was pretty positive. Yeah. Um, so you get to the meet, you, you get your hundred fly out. Did, 
what do you feel like you gained from that race of just kind of, did, did do you feel like it got the nerves out and, and kind of got you into the meat and got you into a groove? Yeah, kind of, I guess. I mean, like, um, I didn't know what the pool was like. I've never like watched or like any, like I started swimming in like 2015, 20, like started seriously swimming. I don't even remember when I seriously, like when I started saying pipers, that's when I started seriously. And I never like watched the Olympics or trials. I've only ever watched like the Olympics on the YouTube. Like I've never like live watched it and going into trials. I was like really nervous and the hundred fly was like, I think it was like the first event of the whole meet. And I was like the first heat and I was like, Oh my gosh, like I got, but then there was only like, three people in the, in the heat. And so I was like, okay, I just got to win. And then, <laughs> um, <laughs> to like get my nerves out. And I was like, it has to be a good race in order to me to like really feel like the nerves were out. And so like, I touched the wall and it was a good race. It was a good race. Like I dropped for like, I dropped like half a second and I didn't really expect to drop because hundred fly. I got the the cut like a month before the trials or like, I don't remember, but I like did, I was trying to get that cut for like a long time and I didn't. And I, and I dropped and I didn't really expect that, but um, yeah, I, <laughs> um, what was I going to say? <laughs> uh, Do you feel like that race got the nerves out? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, uh, so you didn't start seriously swimming until around 2015. Um, oh, when no, did I started swimming in 2015? You started swimming period in 2015. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like lessons. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you started, what year were you born? 2020, 20, 2005. <laughs> 2005. Okay. So yeah. you started swim lessons in two, 2015. When do you feel like you started seriously swimming? Um, and five years ago, or when I started sandpipers, so like five years ago in March, that's when okay. I seriously, because when I was on my old team, mm-hmm. I would take the whole summer off and we'd like travel and like, I just wouldn't swim. Yeah. It was just like a more of a thing to get me like busy during the school year. Yeah. But you were also like, you know, 10 and 11 and 12, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then, so then you joined sandpipers, um, and you start taking swimming more seriously when did making an olympic team become like not a realistic goal but just a goal you know something that you're like wow that would be cool you know like every swimmer yeah, gets every, at some point yeah i feel like every swimmer's goal is to be like oh i'm gonna go to the olympics like um i don't know probably like when i got my first uh probably after covid honestly mm-hmm. like during the covid year i was really confident going in to it um because like the year break I was like oh like maybe I can get a chance to like get ready to actually go probably yeah okay (laughs) yeah so this was it's it's fairly recent dream for you so anyway back back to going back to trials um prelims of the two and free you know your your coach has said I think you got a good shot in this one made you skip the four and free darn you Ron uh (laughs) So, so can you take me through prelims and semifinals of the 200 free for you? Okay. Prelims. Um, well, um, I don't really, I was going into the race. Um, and like, once I swam it, I touched the wall and I saw my time and I was like, Oh, that's not that good. I'm probably not going to make it back. I was like, oh man. And then <laughs> we were like watching the results and we we're like, oh wait, I'm still like kind of first. And there was like a few heats gone. And I was like, wait, maybe I have a chance. And then I got like 11th or something. And, and then it was like the next day and we're going to semis. And I have, <laughs> I don't know why, but like when I'm nervous, I cry. <laughs> so I cried before like all my races. <laughs> um, but, and then my parents get mad at me because they're like, you're wasting energy, like whatever. But um, it's just like my way of getting my nerves out, I guess. And so I start crying and then like, I'm like, no, you, you got this. Like you've trained for this, whatever. And so I go into semis and I honestly don't remember if I was the first or second heat, but I think I might've been the second. I don't actually know, but um, I swam it and I was seventh. I was like, oh my gosh one spot up and I could maybe possibly make the Olympic team 
but that's a lot like that's a lot of that <laughs> um and uh, um I I was the only one that got like the meal tickets for like the the do you know what I'm talking about like swimmers and coaches get like meal tickets to go in at trials and they have like the, a dinner like series and I was the only swimmer that bought the the meal tickets so I would talk to my coaches about like the strategy and stuff and we would like work on it in there and um honestly I didn't really swim it how I should have I mean like the third 50 you know you know you got to swim fast on that but I totally died on that third 50 um but like during finals I was swimming and um I was I tend to go out fast because I don't know how to build um (laughs) so I take out my races really fast and and then I just try to hold it and then if I die then I die um but (laughs) um on the third 50 I was like dying and then on the last 50 I was like man I'm last like there's no way I'm making the team and like I touched the ball and I was like fifth <laughs> wait a second instant tears um <laughs> I get people and I like hugged all my all my teammates and my, and my coach and I was like there was no way <laughs> but then like I was like it isn't for sure so like we're not gonna like make it but like still it's there like <laughs> to offer but like fifth is a kind of I was told that fifth is kind of like guaranteed better than sixth you know so it's like whatever (laughs) and then like also going into finals Bo Becker had this jacket that the coaches bought because he forgot his or something and it was like a 2xl and I like put it on as a joke and it was like really big on me and he was like if you like get six or like faster or better um I'll give you the jacket. And then so like I got out of finals and I was like, Bo, I get the jacket. <laughs> and he was like laughing. It was so funny. <laughs> and I have a two XL jacket. <laughs> and moral of the story, I have a two XL jacket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh so that that should clear up all your questions, listeners, for why Bella Sims wears a two XL jacket. Uh <laughs> but a bing bada boom. Yeah. So <laughs> So you get fifth place in the tuna free again, basically guaranteed your Olympic spot, but how, how long did you have to wait before, you know, you got, you got the verbal confirmation of like, Hey, Bella, you're on the Olympic team. The last day of the meet, like, um, what, or maybe the day before it was like, actually, no, I think it was literally the, the in-between session of like prelims and finals of like the 50 free in the men's mile or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, I was like with my coach walking around to find Lindsay to get the box where it's like, I made the team. <laughs> um, and then like to do registration and stuff. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like this is an actual thing. And then like to go up on the thing with like the rest of the team the thing that like rose. Yeah. yeah. That was like, cool. And like walking around. Oh, and like, even when you were like, um, what do you say? I'm Bella Sims and I'm a Tokyo Olympian or something, whatever. That was pretty cool. <laughs> did, did, is, had it, uh, like, did that help it sink in a little bit that you're like, wow, I, I am an Olympian now. Kind of, but like, not really until I actually like got to like Hawaii, like mm. to see all the teammates and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did, how, how did you deal with waiting that week? you know, until the last day, like, how did you deal with you? You had kind of made it, but you weren't positive that you had made it yet. And you still had other events, um, to swim. Were you able to focus on those events? Yeah, I would say, um, well, I only had, wait, I only had, how many events did I, I think I had two events left, one or two events. And then, um, I had like the eight free and like, I was like, since I'm not like a confirmed person on the, on the team, like I have to like try to get the, the 800 and then I didn't get it. I mean, like going into pre or into finals, I was second. I was like, maybe I have a shot. And, um, and then I, and then I didn't get it, but Katie got it. And I was like the happiest person ever for her. I was like, if I get on the team then like, we're going to be there together. And like Erica got it in the mile the same day I signed the two free. So we're like, we're going to be here all together. And like, I was so happy. <sighs> dude no i mean no kidding so yeah take take me to hawaii especially because you guys have like an the sandpipers have a squad there right it's yeah. it's the three of you it's bo becker too he's there yeah. um 
what was, yeah. What was your experience like in Hawaii at Olympic training camp? It was good. Um, I, I was pretty happy that I got to train with Katie and Erica since like, I'm already used to like them. And I don't really train with Bo. I've never trained with Bo. Like he already graduated when I joined the team or whatever, or not like, the national team. And so I never got to train with him. And then he's also like a sprinter. And <laughs> so he never did our practices, but, um, you consider yourself a sprinter. I don't know what I consider myself. I mean, I would say like a mid distance person, I guess. I mean, I can't do the 50 free, so I'm not going to consider myself a sprinter, <laughs> but <laughs> I'll say mid distance, distance end of the spectrum. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Fair enough. I'm sorry. So yeah, Hawaii. <laughs> but um yeah getting um and getting to know everyone and like training with other people that I've never trained before and seeing how they train and all the hard work that they've put into it was so awesome but yeah my Katie and Erica were like my training buddies before them and um I was so so like fortunate to have them as a training buddy there and it was nice I heard about the uh the Saturday afternoon mile that oh, you yeah. all did there. What was your take on that? Um, okay. Well, okay. So no one had practice that day because everyone decided to take it off. And coach Ron was like, mm, no, we're having practice. <laughs> and so we had a few coaches on deck because they just wanted to watch. Um, and I was the bunny of the mile. <laughs> <laughs> I was the bunny. That's right. So <laughs> it was, but I actually did pretty good. Um, um, I was the bunny, and so I went first. There's like a whole pool to all three, just the three of us. So like it was just me, Katie, and Erica, and we're all like there was me, and then Elaine in between, and then Katie, and then Elaine in between, and then Erica, so that we're not like totally close together. So like if someone catches up, no drafting, like nothing. And then, so I go first. I don't know if I was 10 or 20. I think it was 20 seconds ahead. It was 20. That, yeah. I, that's what I heard. I obviously yeah. wasn't there, but yeah, I think it was 20. <laughs> but it was 20. Yeah. And Katie, um, I, I, I knew that Katie and Erica would like kind of catch up to me because like, I don't like the mile. I, <laughs> <laughs> but it was kind of fun. Um, cause we had the, all the coaches like cheering for us, like on the side and it wasn't that bad, but I, that was like my best time ever in a mile for time, like at, at practice. And it was good. I still finished before both of them, but since it was 20 seconds apart, they like finished not that much after me. And so of course they still beat me, but I'm, I'm surprised they didn't catch up to me. <laughs> yeah. That the, the way I think when I talked to either Ron or Erica about it, the way I, I was led to understand that like that Erica had passed both of you and then Katie had passed you, but, uh, that's cool that you still got to finish first, even yeah. if like the time For, like didn't... five seconds though. So like it wasn't <laughs> <Yeah>. that, long. <laughs> maybe even less, <laughs> but a win's a win, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> nice. Um, so then other, other than Katie and Erica, um, who, who were you training with or, or, or who stood out to you is like, wow, they, you know, their training really impresses me. Um, definitely all like the sprinters because can't relate, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we practiced with Katie Ledecky one or like one or two times. I don't remember, but, um, her practices are really hard and, but her fast is like, or her like moderate, I guess is like are really fast. <laughs> and so like we did, I think it was like six 100s or something like that. And it was like on 105 and you, and the Sandpiper girls just had to go as fast as they possibly could. And short course or long course? Short course. Okay. And yeah. And Katie Ledecky just had to like, um, do you know what like color times are? Like red, something mm -hmm. like that. It was like yeah. red time. And, okay. um, um, and me, Erica and Katie are like sprinting our hearts out and Katie's like doing her whatever pace she was doing. And she was just like going faster than us. And we're like, mm. <laughs> she's a, she's a hard worker. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really hard practice. Um, and then we, 
every now and then or we don't usually train just like freestyle we usually train like every stroke um and like every now and then we would practice with um Annie and Lily and do some breaststroke and that was nice um a nice break from like free and I am I guess <laughs> um but they did a, they do a lot of breaststroke and my shins would hurt after every practice <laughs> uh pain and then and then we practiced with like the open water crew nice. and like nasty and like did their practices wow so you you really got a a full plate there in yeah. terms of training partners. That sounds yeah. really cool. Then, then what, I mean, what was, what was a highlight for you outside of training in, in Hawaii? Definitely getting to meet everyone. Like, um, um, everyone's all like the nicest people I've ever met. And it was just like, so amazing to get like, hear like from hearing stories about how like people like have done things and then actually getting to experience like, um, what they're actually like and like hanging out with them. So, so then, uh, then you go to Tokyo. So what was the biggest, before Olympic trials, what was the biggest meet you had ever been to in your life? A pro series? <laughs> US Open? <laughs> Something like that. I don't okay. Know. Okay. Yeah. So, so then you go to Olympic trials, <laughs> you make the Olympic team, and then you go to the Olympics. Yeah. Um, how did, you know, just being there for the first couple of days, when was your race? Do you remember what day it was on? I guess what night? Um, it was like session nine, so like day okay. five, I think. Gotcha. Like that. Yeah. So you you got to be there for a few days before you had to race. What was what was being at an Olympics like compared to a pro series and or U.S. Open? <laughs> yeah, it was my first international meet, so um, it was crazy. Um, um. Like I said, I only watched Olympic races like on YouTube and like getting to see it on in real life, like watching people's like dreams come true once they hit the wall um, and like getting a world record or like anything like that was like so amazing, like goosebumps every time I watched a race. Um, but since I was on like day five or whatever, I couldn't watch like two days before my race because like it drains so much energy watching like all the races and cheering. So like, I had to like, go back to my, go back to the village and like, I brought my computer and we, um, we try to watch on like online. Um, so that was cool. Cause like, and then like my whole room had like always had like races too. So like there, it wasn't just always me. So it was pretty cool. What was, what was living in the village? Like, it was, it was weird. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I thought it was, I don't even know what it, what I thought it was, but it was not what I expected. It was like apartments. I did not think it was going to be apartment. Um, I thought it was more of like a hotel type thing. Um, but it definitely wasn't, but, but I didn't also think about how many countries there were. <laughs> so yeah, but the food was awesome and my room was packed. <laughs> nice i i think olympic village i think of tents i don't know why but <laughs> i uh my the the visual that comes to my head is just everyone's camping and obviously that's not the case but uh it's i it, i think it's uh normal to <laughs> to have the expectations not met right yeah <laughs> have it have it have it be another way um yeah. So tell me, tell me about your Olympic race. Uh, you know, a few days before you have to take a break, you mellow it down. Um, then it gets to race day. How do you, how, how did that go for you? Well, I was, we were, or I like some practices, we would practice our relay starts. And like, that was the first time I've ever tried like an Olympic relay start with like the foot behind the wedge and whatever. And so like Lily King was like teaching me how to do that. And, but then I ended up not having to do one of those <laughs> and they were like, oh, you're going first. So like, I would just have to swim oh. out in the middle and then like go, um, and just swim in so that they could see how like I finished. Um, and then going into the race, I was so nervous. I have this bracelet on this purple one that I always have on for when I like have practice and I usually take it off for meets and I forgot to take it off for like the race and it was stuck on my, my my wrist because like there's a knot and like, I couldn't get it off I was like <laughs> freak I can't like get it off and I was like you know what? So I'm just I'm just gonna swim with it and so I swam and 
um it wasn't like a best time and like I was nervous I was going first um my first ever Olympic race like that's pretty nerve-wracking if you if I say so myself um (laughs) um and I I didn't I didn't do bad but I didn't do like the best um and I was kind of uh and I touched the wall and like um didn't know how to swim out to the other lanes instead of getting out of the water (laughs) and they were like yelling at me but (laughs) (laughs) um so I had to get out and then I was like oh that wasn't the best like I hope I didn't like funk it for the rest of us <laughs> but um and so we all did it and then we ended up getting first and then um first in the heat second overall and then um we go back we're like going through um like the media stuff we didn't have to do anything but um you have to like walk through it and um I'm like man that was really bad and then like Katie McLaughlin was just talking to me about how like that was probably like one of the best times that I've ever gone, like the third best time that I've ever gone. And like, that still should be really good. And like, I should be really proud of myself. And like, I was, I went to the Olympics and I was like, oh yeah, you're right. Like, why am I thinking like this? So like, um, I was like trying to be more positive about it. And I was like, I went to the Olympics. Why am I like thinking like this? And like, um, I should be proud of myself. And then, so I get, and I like, I didn't cry. Like I, I wasn't crying at that point. And then, um, I saw my coach and I was like, <laughs> instant tears, <laughs> started crying. And then, um, and then he gave me a little talk and, um, he was like, you got to warm down. And then tomorrow you got to go warm up again, because like, in case something bad happens to any of these girls, you're going to have to fill it in. So like, you have to be ready. And I was like, okay, whatever. We're just going to have to get ready for this. And we're like, okay, whatever. And then nothing happened obviously to the girls. And, um, and then, we were watching the two free race and me and Brooke weren't like sitting next to each other. But when the race like touched and like Katie was like on her last stretch, Brooke like walked over to me and like, I was like um, cheering like my heart out and Brooke like was walking over to me and then she touched we got like second. And it was like the best moment of my life. And like, I didn't know that like prelim summers got medals. <laughs> Um, (laughs) there was like a medal ceremony for like the prelim swimmers that I couldn't go to because I was getting ready for my race and so I was like napping and um oh and then like all the my roommates came back to the room and they were like I was like oh like what happened at that meeting and they were like oh we got our medals from like prelims and I was like prelim swimmers give medals (laughs) And so that was something to look forward to after after that race. <laughs> yeah. And, and my parents knew that they got medals. And I was like, well, why didn't I know? <laughs> <laughs> Is that not part of the Olympic briefing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so um, the, I mean, I think the women's 800 free relay was one of the most exciting races of the entire games. It was, it was such a good battle. Um, you end up giving, getting a silver medal. Um, apart from that race, what was, what was a highlight for you of, from just being a fan and, and getting to be in the stands and watch all those races? Um, I don't even know, like watching Caleb, like swim was like awesome. And like, his family on like the the NBC like thing that was so cute (laughs) um and my parents went to Florida for like the the watch party thing and I didn't know that Jay Litherland had triplets or was a triplet and she took a picture like after the 4am she took a picture of all the families like um like celebrating and I was like why is Jay in Florida (laughs) how did he get there so quick? yeah I was like wait a second did he just swim <laughs> and then I found out that they were they had, he was a triplet and I was like oh my gosh <laughs> yeah yeah see yeah, okay yeah those those are those are those are all, those are all great moments um <laughs> that sounds like a really good Olympic experience overall <laughs> so yeah. then coming off of that meet did you did you expect coming off of the Olympics to feel a certain way? Um, everyone has talked about like post-Olympic depression. <laughs> um, and I mean, I guess like, yeah, I felt it. Like I was 
coming off from like a high like of course I was gonna like feel like a type of way and but at the same time I was like missing my family a lot because like they couldn't go and so I was like I kind of just want to go home but then I was like I have to take in this experience because like once I'm home I'm gonna like regret like not like fully taking it in um so like it wasn't like that bad because like then I got to see my family and then like it was like a nice time and then like all my friends and like stuff like that but um yeah it was it was not what I expected but like not what I was meant to go through or like I don't even know yeah (laughs) you know I think that answers the question yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) um so then did you did you take a big break did you get right back into swimming um Um, I took two weeks I mean, at first our coach was like, no, we're not taking a break. Um, then I was like, coach, I'm taking a break. <laughs> I need it. Um, so I took a two week break. And then once we got back to actually swimming, I was doing so bad. I was like, man, I kind of regret taking that two week break. <laughs> then I was like, I know I needed it. Cause like so much stuff has been like, and I haven't taken a break since like for two years or whatever. Um, and I was like, I need it. Um, and then, so when we got back, I would kind of training like while I was on break, like just to get the feel of the water and like whatever. And like, once I got back, my the whole stroke changed. <laughs> so now we got to get back on fixing that. But um, <laughs> when I first joined the group, that's what my stroke is now. And so now I have to get back to. Uh, what, it, what, it, what does that look like? Um, I just don't reach like, um, Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't reach and yeah, basically. And my stroke count is like, it used to be like 52 for like long course. Okay. And there's, there's 50 meters in a pool and that's like (laughs) three feet and I'm five, six and (laughs) that shouldn't be 52. (laughs) Um, What's what's your like Olympic, Olympic in shapeness stroke count? 42. Okay. Yeah. And then right now it's like 46. So it's like in the middle, I guess. Yeah. That's not bad. That seems, that seems all right for taking a break. Yeah. (laughs) Um, after that break, did you feel ready to get back to swimming? Did you feel motivated? Did you feel like more motivated than you ever have? You're like, I'm an Olympian now I'm going to go crush the world. Uh, definitely didn't think like that, (laughs) but I mean, always like whenever I take a break, I always feel like, um, I like miss the pool and so like going back into it is always like the best and then I'll like seeing my friends and stuff like that so yeah so you say you were you know you didn't feel that great in the water your stroke count was off but then we we reported that you swam at the short course meet and you just went best times um okay I did not expect it (laughs) um well like um that was like two months after we got back in though. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, we swam that meet, um, and I didn't really expect it to go that well. Um, cause like, especially for like the two hundreds, because like my endurance was just like off, especially like for fly. It's like so hard to like gain back the endurance that you lost. Um, um, and so like I swam my hundred back and, my underwaters felt really good. And that's, I feel like that's the only reason why I'm good at backstroke is because of my underwaters because during practice it's, it's, it's a mess. Um, and I can't like maintain it during practice. So my underwaters were good on that race and I touched the wall and I was like, okay. And, um, the timer, the scoreboard wasn't working on that meet. So I had to ask the timers, like what I went classic. <laughs> yeah, I know. And the guy was like, you want a 53, like something. And I was like, 53. <laughs> um, excuse me like I think your timer's broken <laughs> no way, I just dropped probably like, wrong <laughs> yeah I know and I walked I walked over to my coach and I was like I just dropped and he was like yeah and I was like what the heck just happened like there's no way I was like about to drop that because I thought my my hundred back was pretty good before that um and yeah and then I swam the two fly and it wasn't that bad it was only a second off my best time but I was, I was dying. Like my fly was like falling apart (laughs) 
And then the hun- the 200 back was a mess. We were not going to talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it seems like now you're doing all right. You just swam in an open water event that sounded awful to me, but I don't know, maybe <laughs> from your face, it seems like you might think similarly. Can you tell me about how that went for you? I, I hate open water. <laughs> um, I don't you. understand why people like it, <laughs> but <laughs> see, it seems like we're on the same wavelength. <laughs> we're, we get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, in April, we had an open water, we had open water nats and that was my coach put me in the 10 K that was my first ever 10 K like I've never done one in practice. I've never like, um, or like we had a 10 K practice before, but I, I showed up late. So I didn't fully do a 10 K, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. He doesn't show us the practice, but, um, <laughs> um, so that was my first 10 K and I cried. We have, um, we had, a, uh, my team, the girls, you, and my you cried before, after, or during both all (laughs) um I was crying the whole time (laughs) the girls in our in my group have had um a cry count and (laughs) okay so I had to count how many times I cried and I cried seven times before my 10k before okay that was just before (laughs) I think it was 14 total that day um Uh (laughs) but I was actually pretty proud of myself for finishing. I was like, I finished and I couldn't walk. My hips hurt so bad. Um, and I couldn't breathe. I think like from go- like swimming for like this, like that way, um, for like two hours straight and like going straight up, I like felt like I knocked the wind out of myself and like, it, it hurt really bad to breathe. And like, and then I couldn't walk and it was like a mess. And, but I saw Erica and I was like, Erica, I finished. <laughs> and she was like I'm so proud of you and it was so funny um <laughs> but then I was like coach I'm never swimming 10k ever again and then I had a 5k the next day and the next day like, yeah and this was in April right yeah this was in April okay and I, yeah so and then I um it was the junior 5k and I was like okay I mean I cried because I just don't like open water and I was like but then I was like it's half of what you did yesterday like you got this and I got second in that and then on the third day, I swam another 5K, the national 5K. Oh my yeah, God. It was, it, was a lot. it was a lot. And then I was like, and then I cried because I was like, I already did this. Like, why would I want to do it again? Like, yeah. whatever. Um, and then, so I was like, coach, I'm never swimming the 10K like ever again. Like put me in that. And then <laughs> I, um, I, I, I tend to say a lot of things that I'm like more of a talk, more talk less do like type person and so I was like coach like after the Olympics I was like coach like I'm already an Olympian like um um I've like um experienced all that put me in the 10k again um and I'll quit swim just to like so that I wouldn't like have to swim the 10k and he was like yeah right and I was like yeah I know but um (laughs) Then we had this, um, this, uh, weekend or like the open water weekend that we just did. Um, and I swam, I got out of the 10 K he was like, do you want to swim the 10 K? And I was like, no. (laughs) And so I got out of it. Um, but I still had to swim two five Ks and some people are like, why would you swim two five Ks over a 10 K? It's because we had to swim two races. Okay. And so everyone in my group swim a 10 and a five. It's just math. (laughs) Yeah. So don't, yeah. Um, (laughs) And yeah, the first one, it wasn't that bad. I had a strategy and I I couldn't, um, I had, I was supposed to draft off at least two people, but I was only drafting off one. It's whatever. Um, and, and then like on the last lap, there's four laps. And like on the last lap, I had to go as fast as I, I could. And like on the third one, I was just like, I tried to, I had to try to build. And on the third lap, it was like about to, um, it was like two stretches until you're out into the fourth lap. And this girl just decided to elbow me in the eye. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm getting out of here. Like, stop. And um, I finished the race. And, like, I was like, oh, um, black guy number two. Because we had a practice and it was relays. And, like, I was racing this guy. He just decided to elbow me. And I got a black eye. Um, And that was also another reason I don't like open water. Um, But um, black guy number two. And then, like, um, I got out of the race. An official came up to me. And they were like, um 
were you the one that got hit in the eye? Like I saw that. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, like I saw it, but like, I wasn't sure if it like, actually happened. And I was like, man, you could have called it, <laughs> but it's whatever. And then the second day we swam the second 5k and that one hurt <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and I'm really bad at like catching people's draft during open water. Like I'm better at it in the pool and it was really hard for me. <laughs> That sounds intense. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that reason or those races are the reason why I identify as um, a sprinter. <laughs> but then like when it actually comes to pool, I'm like, nah. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So you're, yeah. you're, you're a sprinter in open water. Yeah. That's fair. Um, did you, was there any prize money at this? Did you walk yeah. away with any cash? I didn't because I think you had to swim the 10K and the 5K to win money. What? Yeah. It's whatever. I, that's, <laughs> I feel like that's a little uh, classist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't even like place high enough to like get money. It's like one, two, and three, and I got fifth. Okay. And, like, well, the, the first race I swam didn't qualify for any, like you couldn't qualify for money. Gotcha. All right. Well, maybe, maybe next time then. Mm. <laughs> or not yeah I, I like that i like that one <laughs> <laughs> nice um so what what is what is the training group like now for you at sandpipers um knowing that there's two olympians in your training group but also uh not having erica there anymore after yeah. you know having having her there for three years of her senior year of high school <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I wouldn't say it's like different. Like sometimes the boys will be like, or like, they'll tell me to go first. And I'll be like, no, like, why would I go first? Like you're a boy. And they'll be like, but you're an Olympian. Like you have a silver medal medal. And I was like, oh my gosh, like not this. And in that <laughs> voice, right? <laughs> Definitely. Um, <laughs> um, but I wouldn't say it's like much different. Um, our team, our group used to have like eight people and then like, a bunch of them graduated or like not grad or two of them left Erica and, and Dylan Gravely they left to go to college and so our group was like six people and then um so he decided to move some people up and now our group is the biggest it's been in like three years um <laughs> Which is how big? Like 11 of us I think it's literally not that big and yeah, I, I it's just a lot because now we have like three people in a lane or two. Like, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> three um, or four people during long course, it's like too much because our <laughs> lane lines are like old and like broken and they won't like tighten as tight as they possibly can. So like I have so many like scratches on like my body because they're just like, I like ram into them. Yeah, I, I relate to that. Yeah. Um, I used to have a, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that's not a big training group. Do you feel like you get like optimal training? Do you feel like you get what you need to out of that training yeah. group? Just with that few, the, that amount of people or training yeah, partners. Yeah. yeah. The boys are a, a good, like they help push all of the girls, um, during like sets and it's just nice to have them. And like, I'm a person where I have to like laugh during practice or it's just like, or not like laugh, like talk to people or like, it's just really boring. And the boys and, and the girls really like, we're like family. So like we bond pretty well and it, it's a pretty good, pretty good, a pretty good time. Nice. <laughs> yeah. But so, you know, I've, I've talked to Ron, he's told me about your workouts. He made me have a respect for distance swimming. He didn't make <laughs> me want to do it. Um, but he made me have a respect for it and, and how he operates. What, what do you feel like your, um, your, like a training week looks like for you? Um, what normally, like, what does that look like just in terms for how many yards you're swimming or what kinds of practices you do in a normal week? Um, we kind of like know kind of what we're doing for like practices because like every day is like a, like we kind of, um, there's like a, a routine kind of, um, for every week. Um, and during training trips, it's like different, but there's always like 
one day there's like always a long kick set and then um there's always like I am and then we do every stroke except like fly we don't do we probably do that like once a month because no one likes doing fly except me but (laughs) it's whatever um we probably like switch fly and brush stroke off like every other week something like that but every time we do a pull set it's always a stroke and that's what we know that's what we do every practice like the next practice i don't Uh know but like if the pull set is like backstroke then the next practice is going to be backstroke like that's the main set gotcha yeah so do you do you pull you do pull sets with all strokes yeah sounds hard uh like the fly is like 50s it's just like 20 okay. 50s. do you feel like what do you feel like you gain from 2050s fly pull the shoulder strength <laughs> <laughs> it's jacked yeah. yeah and this like i like having to do long fly sets because in like my my endurance i like it's my motivation i feel like um we do like fly builder sets and it's like um 100 or like 425 is perfect stroke 100 fly for time 625 is 150 for time for 825 is 200 and then 1225 is 300 for time and that's like my favorite set ever um i i love i love fly builder sets and no one likes doing it like and no one in my group likes doing it at all all. and i get sad because then they talk crap about it and i'm like excuse me (laughs) i like that set (laughs) Uh, you, t- you stole the words from my mouth. I was going to ask you about if, if you had a favorite set that, that would be my favorite set. If I, when I was swimming, that's, that's a great set. Everyone knows tuner flies the best event. Uh, it really is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 200, 200 flyers know what's up. Yeah. Um, that's a great set. I, that's not yeah. even hard, right? I mean, it's just a bunch of 25s and then you'd. Exactly. You're just like in the zone when you swim it anyway. So whatever. It's like, yeah. But, but like, yeah. Yeah. As- and there's only two other flyers like besides me in the group. And I think we should have more, but it's whatever. Um, <laughs> and so when we do prime sets, everyone always feels bad for the flyers, but I think it's a fun time. Uh, so what is the, is there a practice you've done with Ron that is like, hands down the hardest practice you've ever done well okay so there's some practices where they're just the same and they just hurt way more than the other ones Mm. so like um the 850s and a 4 im so it's like 850s um i am order and then a 400 i am for time and we i think we did it like three times at this train trip in cedar city and it hurt so bad and then we do like um pace 50s after or yeah pace 50s after and it was the worst pain in my life it hurt so bad (laughs) but like everyone was feeling that way so it made me feel better (laughs) okay like at least like I wasn't going through it alone nice uh Cedar City where is that is that in Nevada Utah Utah. is that at altitude yeah it was only like 4,000 I think okay so it's kind of like baby altitude yeah, we're at 3,000 already, so it wasn't, like, that bad. Oh, okay. Yeah. Didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. Do, do you guys go on, like, a training trip like that, Cedar City or somewhere like that often? Um, I would say. We went on, like, two before, before trials. We went to Coronado, California, and that's, like, zero altitude. So, like, that was... But nice. very nice. Yeah. <laughs> And then we went to Cedar City. Okay. And then like, Cedar City was like a month or two weeks. And then like Coronado was a month, something like that. Maybe the other way around. A month? Like yeah. you were there for a month? Yeah. And my Did- mom is like the designated cook. <laughs> and so she, she's like, she's the cook. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you stay at like hotels or um, apartments or yeah uh it was like a hotel thing okay yeah and they're like the rooms are like erica got her own room and then me and Paige kawada shared a room and then the boys got their own room and then the um 
they're kind of set up by families and if not gender like mm-hmm. um and then like the grimes got their own room gotcha yeah sounds pretty sweet it was yeah sandpipers training trips <laughs> you have to they're get fun until they're not like it's just like the, they're fun but like the practices are like 10 times harder than they're they are at home yeah it, yeah gotcha um okay so so looking forward um what what is your meet schedule like for this year or this short course season um juniors and sectionals <laughs> that's really it i mean we have um we have like a few in state <laughs> and then we have another like a local meet this weekend we have a it's called the pumpkin heat the pumpkin meet do you get pumpkins um well like i don't know if they're doing it now because of like covid and whatever because they didn't do it last year but um so the pumpkins got covid yeah um but they like every once in a while they'll be like it's a pumpkin heat and then they're like it, whoever wins gets candy oh it's that sounds cool. that's pretty awesome yeah it is and Gosh. i've only ever been in one pumpkin heat and i was like really sad because i was racing erica and then she, <laughs> she can she can build her races like and i was in front of her for like it was a 200 free and i was in front of her for like the 150 but like she builds her races and like last minute, she was like fast. Yeah. <laughs> and I get my candy. <laughs> do you do you um have you worked on on being able to build your races at all? Yes, I swear. And I just I literally can't. I don't know why. I mean, like I probably could if I. I don't know. I I, I try. I swear. <laughs> I try, and it just doesn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha. You might, I, I think you'll get there one day. Yeah. One day. Definitely. <laughs> you'll get that. You'll get the pumpkin heat. <laughs> um, so, okay. So you've got juniors in winter mm-hmm. sectionals in the spring. No sectionals uh, is like right after juniors. It's like the weekend after in December. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, <laughs> and then, oh, wait, uh, I think- yeah no never mind i i don't know what i was gonna say when's your when's your high school season like when is your state meet i can't do high school um but state is like just like club state okay yeah i'm not familiar with with the club state oh really what is that other states states don't have that i guess not i don't know i I feel like other states states do things differently yeah Um, but like it's just like um vegas and then like reno and like all the upper go to like one side so we're going to like carson city mm-hmm. for um for all the the whole state to like race each other nice yeah um you're not allowed to do high school no gotcha bummer is that a is that a, like ron doesn't want you to do high school well at first it was um huh. but now i just literally can't because of like you say something like i take the money so i'm not allowed to oh yeah <clears throat> gotcha yeah so you can and that's that's interesting i didn't realize that in like the ncaa obviously changed their rules so now you can get money but for high school you can't huh bummer (laughs) um all right i'm never gonna be able to experience high school but it's okay it's whatever gotcha is that something (laughs) you wanted to do um yeah but it's it's okay i mean i just like i know that it would just be like a fun time with like just like something fun to do yeah but it's okay <laughs> does your high school have a big swim team i'm homeschooled um, okay so then how would how would, would say, you yeah kind of school? katie's on my on goes to the same school as me or like goes to the same school as me so like our high school swim team is pretty stacked by, <laughs> but <it's> nice. <laughs> pretty yeah. solid relay <laughs> yeah it's me her me her <laughs> <laughs> um you guys should do that at a meet i oh my gosh we've talked about this me and katie were like we have to have a relay where it's just us two i think we would do so good we were talking about which strokes we would do i don't remember what we had planned but 
we talked about this. It seems like it would pop off. It would. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, just just give me the scoop whenever you guys decide to do it. Um, okay. so we can, so we can like, you know, get race video of it or something. Okay. Um, are you planning on, on world champ trials? Have you gotten that far? Okay. Yeah. We're, we're trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to do that. Um, how do you, how do you feel about going into another trials meet? Just, you know, knowing you've, you've been to Olympic trials, you've been to the Olympics. I mean, do you feel, are you going to swim like 11 events there? I only have like eight cuts. <laughs> only eight. Only eight. Man, gotta work harder. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, going, I'm, I'm kind of scared. Kind of go because, like, I'm trying to get into shape right now. But um, I think I'll have enough time before then. But hopefully, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm, fair enough. That's that's a ways away. I, I think I'm yeah. probably getting ahead of myself. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Bella, it's been awesome talking to you today. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and chat. Uh, is there anything we missed? Is there any topic I didn't get to that you, you have a burning desire to get out? No, not really. <laughs> um, well, perfect. Well, yeah, I again, it's been great talking and I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.